So uh, my first question is for you, Stephen, and I, I don't want to dwell on this point too much, but I do want to bring it up. Um, Sleeping Dogs was originally a true crime game, uh, and you guys were originally going to be published by Activision. Um, so what was kind of the process like? Like once you guys kind of got canceled by Activision, um, what was the process like uh, on on your end of what happened with the game, and then when it got picked up by Square? Um, what were some of the changes that, that, that occurred due to that? Well, you know, f for us, uh, we always believed in the game. You know, the fact that it got cancelled, um, you know, because it's obviously a difficult, uh, it's difficult to deal with, but at the end of the day, you know, we had a studio and we had a lot of people, like externally, that, you know, really believed in what we were doing. So, you know, when Lee and Square came along and, uh, you know, they liked what they saw and, and we really liked what they had to say, you know, there was an immediate partnership there which we thought okay you know we can actually make this thing and, and make it great I think you know specifically for me like looking to a publishing partner that had you know the open world experience and they just put Just Cause 2 out um, the main mechanic in the game you know being melee combat and, and so on and they just released uh, Batman Arkham Asylum that you know f for us was incredibly important because you know they shared the same vision they, they shared the same passion as us. As you mentioned uh, there's, there's definitely some elements of like Just Cause and Batman um, on your side of things with Square, when you guys when you guys saw this game, when you guys were looking at it um, for, to potentially publish it, and you saw those elements in there, was that consistency with the other stuff that you had published, like something that appealed to you guys? And then, if so, like, did you have some input into development process on that stuff? Yeah, I mean, the hard thing about making open world games is it generally all comes together quite late, so you get this period of. Whether you want to call it uncertainty or something, I don't know the best language to describe it, but you know, there's lots of money going into a game and kind of not a lot to see. You can't really kind of feel everything all meshed together until quite late in the development compared to a regular game. So we've got a lot of experience with that, so we understand what that looks like. And it doesn't scare us, I guess, right? We kind of know what to expect and when. And you know, when we first uh, got in touch with the guys at UFG, uh, one of the most important things to me is that you know, there's so many kind of first class people in that studio. They've got a disproportional amount of really senior guys that have been there and done it before. I mean, we speak to tons of developers and you know, everyone tells you, oh, we want to make a 90% Metacritic game, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, there's actually not very many people that have done that. These guys have done it before and they know how hard it is. It's not easy. And you know, they understand how great games are made. And that in itself isn't easy either. You know, I think there's really good parity between the two studios that we've done that before. We know how to do that. You know, those guys have got all the right ingredients for the special secret sauce to sprinkle all over the top of it to make it a super fun experience. And it's just a really great partnership. I think one of the things that immediately struck me about the demo, and obviously being here in Hong Kong helps, but just that like how accurate sort of the recreation and the feel of being in the city of Hong Kong is. Um, what was the process like for you guys like in, in recreating that in a, in a game space? Well, I mean, essentially Hong Kong is the star of the show, right? Like uh, any open world game, uh, the, uh, the city is your central character. So for us, you know, Hong Kong was at the root of pretty much all the inspiration for the game. You know, not just a different open world city to go to, but you know, the fact that you know, Hong Kong cinema is something that we were really into at the time, like you know, Hong Kong martial artists. And you know, the idea that we always had was you know, bringing allowing gamers to be that you know, Hong Kong martial artist, you know, action star in an open world. So you know, we spent a lot of time coming over here, going through each of the neighborhoods. The game isn't a recreation of Hong Kong, you know, street for street, but it was way more important for us just to capture the essence of each of the environments and the feel. You know, and that's what you, you feel when you're here, right? Like you can actually smell it and touch it. And so we took, you know, so, uh, thousands and thousands of photographs, thousands, you know, like tons of hours of video reference, we interviewed a lot of people just to make sure that we, you know, we paid it the right respect and, and you know, got, those, uh, got those details right. And so we feel really confident when people get in there and experience it, you know, it's going to be like you're in Hong Kong. Totally. I mean, one of the things I loved in the demo was when he walked down into the street, one of the guys was like soliciting him to like buy a suit, which like totally happened to us like a million <laughs> times on the street yesterday. Um, so let's talk about kind of the core of the story. Um, it's, it, you said something interesting uh, when you were doing the presentation, which was that you guys are taking both um, a, an Eastern, like kind of Hong Kong cinema influence on that stuff, but also a Western influence. I mean, you mentioned like The Departed. Um, you want to talk about kind of the influences of the story and then like, kind of the, the basics of it? I mean, I think at its core, you know, we wanted to create a classic undercover cop story. And, you know, that comes with all the tension, all that, that moral dilemma that you often, you know, that characters find themselves in. They have to go deep undercover. 
and before you know it, you know, they actually start to like, you know, and befriend like the people that they're actually undercover with. And I think allegiances get very murky, and you know, it's 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 a grey morality. There is, it's not a world of black and white. And that's the intriguing thing about an undercover cop story. So, you know, looking at, at movies like Infernal Affairs, you know, which pretty much got remade shot for shot into The Departed, um, you know, that was a great reference point for us. But uh, along with that, the Tried Election series, um, you know, also then there were, you know, Western movies like uh, Eastern Province Promises, David Cronenberg's Eastern Promises, Donnie Brasco. It was really just going through like all those classic, like those great undercover movies. And then how could, you know, how could we recreate that in a video game? Cool, cool. Um, one of the other things that, at least for me, stood out as being very, uh, I guess, Western influence was that, like, Hong Kong cinema traditionally isn't as violent as that demo was. I think it was awesome, like, when he picks up the dude and, like, drops him on the pole. Like, I, I really dug that stuff. It was, it was pretty violent. Would you say that that was, like, kind of some of the Western influence, like, seeping into the game? Um, there's, there's definitely a little bit of both. Like, you know, the... You watch a lot of the Hong Kong action movies, you know, from way, way back when, and uh, there's a lot of violence in there, but it's very fluid, the way that they bring the environment into play and the way they incorporate it. But definitely for the game, obviously we've hyperbolized things a bit, <laughs> and uh, you know, there are some Western influences there in terms of, you know, the spectacular kills that you can, you know, do on, on uh, things in the environment. So, you know, much like Hong Kong is a fusion of East and West, you know, the game is a fusion of East and West, and I think that's the beautiful thing about the city, and it's a beautiful thing about the game. You mentioned uh, for the demo, uh, we saw a few different mechanics. We obviously saw the melee stuff, and we saw some of the driving and the open world stuff there, and, and some shooting. Um, I think one of the big challenges, and one of the things that open world games, like, tend to not always get right, is sort of a, the balance in, like, flow between all of those mechanics, and then also incorporating side quests and story stuff, like, uh, how are you guys being conscious of that? I think the thing that we were probably the most mindful from from the get-go, you know, to really capture Hong Kong cinema action, was to exact have exactly that, like flow between the mechanics. You know, you watch those movies; it, they're not stop starty. They're not like, no, I'm picking up a gun, no, I'm running. So our, our mantra, you know, right from the beginning of uh, development, was no modes. You should be able to do anything. You know, that you can do in the game seamlessly and use anything. So it's not like specific moves are set up for specific missions. I can do that anywhere out in the, in the, in the open world. So you know, with that in mind, it's challenging, but uh, you know, that's where we've invested so much of our time and our effort, just in making sure that that action you know, is seamless and, and moves through. I mean, just to carry on from what Stephen was saying there, I mean, you saw it in the demo yourself. You can be you know, running along in an open world game, vault over, you know, like a table or an object or something, and there can be a bad guy on the other side. Literally smash the guy, hit the guy, catch his gun, and then carry on running and start shooting. I mean, it really is seamless action like that. Um, jumping back to your question mm -hmm. on release date, it's going to be the second half of 2012. We haven't pinned down the exact date, but definitely later this year. Cool, awesome. Thanks for talking to us, guys. Seriously, we appreciate Pleasure. it. Very awesome. Well. Great. Nice to meet Thanks. you. Thanks. Cheers. Come, come, come.